Hello, my name is Lulu Kupaza. I reside in Arusha. What's your name? My name is uh, Ramadani Kupaza. Okay. I'm also located in Arusha. Okay. And how old are you? I'm 73 years old now. Okay. And your level of education? I'm a graduate. I'm a graduate from the university. Okay. And are you married? Yes. Children? I have two children. Okay. What livelihoods other than agriculture do you undertake? Uh, I do training. Uh, training in what? Training in marketplace literacy and uh, tourism. Okay. Um, what inspired you to become a farmer? A friend of mine inspired me to venture on buying land and therefore one of the activities on uh, using land is farming. Okay. And how long was this at all? This was um, in the 80s. Okay. okay. So you have like, uh, how how many years of experience would you say you have in farming? Uh, I can say something like 40 years now. 40 years. Yeah. Okay. And what is the size of your farm? I have several small farms. Uh, one of them is the biggest, I could say. No, not the biggest, but one of them is for... Four, four acres. Four acres. Okay. And this is also um, located in Arusha? No, this is located in the eastern coast of Tanzania, which is a Tanga region. Okay. So you usually go uh, to and from Arusha to the farm? And... Yes. Okay. Um, what did you start farming? I started farming the oranges uh, three years ago. Okay. Okay. And that's what you're uh, farming to date? Yes. So I'm starting, I've started to harvest this year. Okay. That's good. Um, And how, where and how did you learn farming? Uh, from my parents. Uh, this is something which I grew up uh, doing. So uh, that's the only, only knowledge which I have about farming. Okay. And are there state or non-state um non-state agencies that provide farmers like you with um farming knowledge or skills? I hear they are, but I've never used them. Okay. And and these are common for people to I don't think so. I don't think so. Many people just uh, learn from friends and from parents. Okay. And and these people, so who would you say uh use these agencies would these be uh lower income or middle or higher income i would say lower income perhaps through community-based projects okay okay and what about financial support <laughs> even financial support i think is very limited mm -hmm. very limited but there are agencies that provide financial support yeah, uh, at very limited level, at, at the point of um, uh, demonstrations, perhaps uh, using the the farms to demonstrate to show the right seeds for the for the area. Okay, and what about farm implements? Do people do this agency provide people with farm implements? No, but there are some subsidies. Uh, government occasionally provide uh, lower priced uh, uh, implements. Okay. And what are the core crops which you um, cultivate? I do oranges and mangoes. Okay, oranges and mangoes. Um, have you started um, harvesting mangoes as well? Mangoes, yes. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. What um, factors or circumstances influenced your decision to cultivate uh, the mangoes and oranges? I imagined that um, mangoes and oranges are long-term and since I'm located far away from the farms, it might be easier to uh, control and manage long-term crops like oranges and, and uh, mangoes because they are trees. Okay. Okay. And what other crops uh, grow in the farm? The um, 
some people who take over the farm, they they grow they grow ban uh, not bananas but um, cassava, mm -hmm. uh, but also they grow other fruit trees like um, um what can I say lemon, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And how how do you select um or choose appropriate seeds or seedlings to grow in your farm? Uh, I ask there are varieties, so uh, orange varieties, and um because I was thinking of commercial crops, I select based on uh, crops which are resistant when about when they are transported, they can resist getting getting rotten along the way okay and where and how uh, do you obtain water for your farm i depend on uh, rain seasons okay only okay so you don't do irrigation no i don't okay and who provides labor for your farming activities i hire labor okay uh, i hire labor all the time okay and and do you uh hire them is it like a per month basis or per day? No, per, per job. If it is uh, time to clear the, the field, mm. I hire labor for that purpose. Okay. Sometimes there's time to uh, replant mm -hmm. you know, when the seedlings die. So I, I hire people for that purpose, either for their skills mm -hmm. or for clearing the field. Okay. And who supervises your farming practices in your absence? Uh, I have a, I have a friend, sort of a caretaker, okay. a person who takes care of the farm. Okay. And do you pay this uh, friend? No, I don't pay. Once a while, once a while, I I give a uh, sort of a token. Okay. Uh, but I don't I don't really consider that payment. You know. Okay, and um, you said that uh, you depend on rainy seasons to. Yes. So when do you uh when during the year do you cultivate? Um, this is um around um March, before the long rains. Okay, okay, and when would you harvest? Would you say maybe for mangoes or oranges? For mangoes, uh, around. Uh, August and uh, oranges in December, like now. Okay. Okay. And so, I, okay. So this is not it's at which stage. So do you, would you say that somebody with a farm, a newly sort of um, a new farm with no orange trees or uh, mango trees, if I cultivate in March, I would harvest in sometime August, September. Yes, but of course that is, uh, that is, uh, let's say after for oranges, you have to wait for grafted seedlings. You have to wait for three years. Okay. For harvest. Okay. And um, yeah, the same for mangoes. You have to wait three, four years for harvest. Okay. During that period in the month. Okay. In the year. Okay. So thereafter, then I'll be cultivating and in March and then get yes. harvest. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, what does scale mean in your farming practices? Yeah, for for me, I'm not looking for bigger plots. Uh, mm -hmm. Scale for me is really uh, diversity of the varieties of uh, oranges and uh, varieties of uh, mangoes on the farm. Okay. Yeah. So the diversity for me is uh, what I would uh, consider to be scale. scale. Also adding value to the crops, like the oranges and mangoes. Okay, so you wouldn't say things like uh, increasing the farm area is scale no, to you? No, Or the quantity of the no, produce? especially I think it's because it's um, um, far from the farm, mm -hmm. it's difficult to survive a bigger, bigger chunk of land. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about supplying um, farm produce to raw markets? Would you uh consider that scale? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so because I think it will be easier for me to use the 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 the, the, the small quantity which I have from the, my small farm, mm -hmm. 
and buy from other people and mm -hmm. and sell at the same time as I sell my crops. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And what do you expect your farming practices to become uh, five years from now? Yeah, I think uh, to, to increase diversity, uh, as I said, diversity of, in terms of varieties of the the current crops, but uh, diversity in the farm in terms of other other uh, long term crops like uh, other fruits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what farming challenges do you encounter? Uh, at the moment, um, basically, it's of course the drought. Uh, it's one of them, but also when. There is no drought like now. I think this is what good year, but then we have uh, theft people okay. stealing the oranges from the farm and and the mangoes. Okay. Yeah. Um. So when you say theft, so your farm is not uh, fenced in. It's not fenced. It's not fenced. Okay. And how do you resolve the farming challenges that you just mentioned? Yeah. So I'm intending to because I haven't started the business of uh, uh, harvesting and selling. Mm -hmm. So I'm intending to establish that process so that uh, there is a reason for frequent visits to the, to the farm. Okay. And this way, I think I can reduce the, um, the, uh, the, the safety practices in the area. Okay. And, and how much do you sell oranges per kilo? We, we don't sell oranges per kilo. We sell uh, oranges per orange. Per orange. Yes. And how much would you say one orange costs? At the farm, uh, one orange, uh, when it is uh, on the tree, one orange is uh, 30 shillings. Okay. And when it's um, harvested to the ground, it's uh, around 35 shillings. Okay. And then when it's... Uh, uh, brought to the uh, tarmac road maybe or the uh, collection places for transport mm -hmm. for suppliers mm -hmm. it goes up to 40 shillings per, per orange. Okay, so you do not sell wholesale? I have not started okay. selling wholesale. Okay, so you're still selling uh, yes. retail? Yes, but I've, uh, I've investigated how much uh, how much it costs wholesale. Okay, and how much is um, Wholesale, well, wholesale, they st you still count. You still count. Um, if, even if someone wants to buy wholesale, they still buy power range. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's 50, uh, 50 shillings per power range when it is, has already been transported to, okay. the, to the buyers. Okay. So how much the is market. the market price right now? So that, that is 50. 50 shillings. Yeah, 50 shillings per orange. Okay. So, so if I was to calculate a wholesale, it will still be say if I'm taking the if I'm buying the oranges from the farm, I'll still count it as per thirty shillings on the G, the harvest yes. thirty five. Yes. Okay. Okay. So this is irrespective of how many oranges I'll get, if it, even yes. if it's retail. Yes. Okay. So what inputs do you need to cultivate oranges? Well, so far. I use the just the normal normal um, technologies like hand holes, but the area is suitable for tractor. Okay. Once you have uh, access to tractors, you can use tractors. Okay. Have you started using tractors? No, right now it's it's not possible to use a tractor now because the trees are there. Okay. As I say, the first harvest. Okay. It be difficult to maneuver the tractor uh, okay. around the trees in the area. Okay. Okay, and which are the inputs that are more difficult to obtain? Um, so far, I don't see any because um, up to now, up to now, I haven't used uh, uh, any any um, uh, pesticides. Uh, originally, there was a problem of uh, well. Let me say, get just the seedlings themselves. You have to transport them at least twenty, thirty kilometers from where they are. But there are skills. People in the area have skills in grafting the oranges and the mangoes, so you can 
plant the the, the parent uh, parent tree mm -hmm. like lemon and then they will do the grafting so challenges are not much really. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you're saying that you've never used pesticides, no. is that right? No. So you don't get challenges of like uh, the crops being attacked by pests? So, so far, no. And I hope uh, it will not happen because uh, um, I intend not to, to use pesticides. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what are oranges used for? Mostly, it's, uh, it's just uh, people eat uh, oranges, mm -hmm. uh, but also they make juice. And um, uh, I understand you can also make jam from oranges. Okay, and how are the uh, how are they processed for these various use uses that you just mentioned? Uh, really, I'm not uh, familiar with the the processes. Mm -hmm. uh, I only see the finished products. Okay. And how are oranges packaged in order to generate quality? Um, yeah, I think it's canning. I understand uh, I'm not familiar, but uh, I know there are some factories in, in the region uh, which uh, can uh, this particular crop mm. in terms of juice. Jam, I, I'm not sure about jam, but I'm not juice. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of well, factories which do that. Okay. Do you think it's more uh, profitable to cultivate or to process or sell processed orange products? I assume it's more pro profitable to, to, to sell the finished products. I, I think so. Uh, I have not done any research, but I think people who are engaged in selling the finished products, they make more money. Okay, and so what, I know you said that uh, you gave the reasons why you chose oranges and mangoes as your choice of crops, but, and then you also said that in terms of scale, you consider more the quality and uh, value and added. Diversity, yes. Yeah, yeah. so why still, I don't, I don't, I still don't understand why you chose those particular crops. Is it, what is the end game for you? Yeah, well, let me, let me just say that um, uh, really my, because of my background maybe is my, my environmentalist. Mm -hmm. um, I have passion for trees. Okay. Uh, passion for long-term plants like trees. Okay. So oranges just happen to be uh, in the area, almost everybody does oranges, uh, but uh, I would be interested in other uh, trees as well. In fact, this year I've started planting uh, sour soap, which is the same family with the, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, it's a family of, um, uh, I can't remember, but sour soap, but, but also I'm interested in um, planting various other trees in the area. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's a passion for, for planting particular long term long term uh, plants. And and this passion would you say that you had it since you're at a young age or it was something recent? Young age, uh, no, I can't say that, but uh, this is, I think, as I said, my, my background is environment and uh, therefore uh, planting trees is uh, it happens to be one of my passion. Well, but we have also seen people like environmentalists, but uh, prefer maybe more indigenous sort of style of, you know, uh, say getting imported plants or trees like palm trees and things like that yes i think the um i, I want to consider consider both um i think uh, a, a tree any any tree is environmental okay yeah so i think if you if you do uh, fruit tree, you can um, kill two birds with one stone. So you okay. have for the same time you have uh, food, okay. but also the tree does the environmental things, things like uh, 
absorbing carbon the okay. issue of uh, absorbing carbon from the environment is the same mm -hmm. but this way of course the other trees uh, can get timber but i'm not really into timber i think i prefer to focus on the uh, food okay. yeah and and do you remember the first time you planted a tree do you remember how old you were mm -hmm. Perhaps um, I would say you mean trees for for my purpose. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, not in the front, but for my purpose, I could say this was the nineteen eighties. Okay. Yeah. And do you remember what kind of tree that was? Again, fruit it trees. Was a fruit tree. Avocado. It was an avocado. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, of course, I have. Uh, let me let me also say that I have other uh, uh, farms where I plant other trees. You know, okay. I, I do exotic trees like um, eucalyptus, alien. Okay. Yeah. So it's not just. Uh, uh, I'm talking about uh, oranges and uh, mangoes okay. for this particular farm, but okay. I also have uh, areas where I plant other trees for other purposes like timber okay yeah. okay and uh, what do you aspire in um, farming what are your aspirations uh my aspiration is really is really just a uh, diversity and um try to make sure that uh, i can uh, uh, create a farm which is a demonstration of how to uh, cultivate an area um, using environmental practices okay so that uh, the other people can copy from that okay and what would you like to tell uh, elders uh, youth anybody of any age really about environment in general yeah i think um, let's plant trees um, uh, we are 16 million people in tanzania the, um, the population is young. I think 60% or so is uh, youth. So I think if um, uh, Tanzanians plant one tree, everybody plants one tree, or you plant one tree for your child at the moment, uh, we are talking about 60 million trees. And this can be very good uh, uh, carbon sink to absorb the carbon, which is being produced by factories and therefore make a major contribution in, uh, um, you know, prevent preventing global warming. Okay. Yeah, so just one tree, just one tree for everybody. You're talking about 60 million trees. Imagine we have 10 trees. So it's my, uh, my wish that everybody can plant at least one tree. Okay. Every season. Okay. And now I'm curious because you're saying this is a, is a passion and you mentioned that it started a very long time ago. Um, since you reside in Arusha and your uh, farm is in a different region, do you have uh, or have you planted trees in the place where you are residing in Arusha? Yes. No, I have a... Uh... Uh, a lot of trees uh, again again based on uh, diversity and yeah not quantities but uh, diversity of uh, trees mm -hmm. even crops i think avocados alone i planted a variety of five different uh, uh, varieties mm -hmm. um, indigenous trees like acacia and other six varieties mm -hmm. in quite a small area Sure. bananas uh, five varieties yeah but but also but also my other focus is that uh, i would like to see a farm self-contained mm -hmm. produce um, five or six uh, basic professional um, uh, requirements oil mm -hmm. protein um, starch mm -hmm. um, vitamins and this kind of thing so this is how I focus. And have you started trying to make uh where you live self 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 sufficient? Yes. So um 
where I live, I have um, a plant, it's a climber. Uh, it's called um, oyster nuts, which produces oil and uh, protein. Okay. Uh, also bananas, uh, which uh, produce uh, starch. Mm -hmm. uh, vegetables, uh, spinach um, for minerals, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so this kind of uh, thinking. Okay. I have macadamia, macadamia nuts for okay. oil. <clears throat> so really to cover the uh, the whole range of uh, nutritional requirements for persons. So in terms of um, making money, I look at uh, the uh, the extras or the surplus to be sold to make money, but I don't start with the, the concept of planting to make money. I start with the concept of making sure I have nutritional values which are required for, uh, for the health of the family, and then the surplus is sold to make money to buy other, other items. Okay, and, and would you say that um, these uh, plants, which is and trees, which is quite impressive that you've planted in your area where you live, uh, are benefiting your family. Yes, benefiting the family uh, very much because um, I, I can see, I can uh, make reference to the time when we had, uh, had uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the farm had every, every requirement. Okay. Uh, in this case, uh, of course, we had water as well. Mm -hmm. So, in this case, um, uh, you could be you could be in a guarantee for all year round without uh, without any problem because in terms of food, of course. Mm -hmm. So, I think this is a good concept. Um, I didn't I didn't plant like that to prepare for COVID, but I think it was a coincidence that uh, had a. Uh, all the requirements which we needed as food in the in the family uh, until the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, went away. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Any last remarks? No, I think um, I think that's uh, that's it. I just uh, I just uh, perhaps just uh, to um. A, an advice to people who are in the subsistence uh, uh, level who are not farming commercial crops as much as I do. Uh, I mean, uh, I do four, four acres is very little. So people who are in that category, I would suggest that they focus on uh, producing food for their family and um, sell the surplus to get... Uh, uh, money for other items like clothes mm -hmm. instead of uh, focusing money uh, to get money so that you buy food okay. because uh, uh, I think that's a higher risk for them. Yeah. Okay. Kupaza, uh, I would like to thank you for your time and your inputs that were very insightful. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay.